I had not originally intended to speak on the Red Road Traffic Amendment Bill, but life clearly had other plans for me. Last month, I was knocked down by a bus, a big lumbering double-decker to be exact. On the evening of 13th June, at about 8.15pm, I was crossing the road at the junction of Upper Changi Road East and Somapa Road on my way to the Singapore University of Technology and Design to meet my students. They had developed a game to educate the public about fake news and were excited to demonstrate it to me. And by the way, the game is brilliant. Coming back to me at the road junction, I had waited for the light to turn green in my favour and proceeded to walk once it did so. I assure the members of the House that at no point was I using my phone and that I was single-mindedly focused on making my way across as briskly as possible. When I was about three quarters of the way to the other side, I suddenly felt something very large looming over me, and I turned to my left to see a double-decker about this close to me. I was um, stunned, and I even made eye contact with the driver and caught his horrified expression as he saw me. The next thing I knew, I had been thrown onto my back and I felt my head hitting the road very, very hard. At that point, I literally saw stars, those in my head and those in our beautiful night sky, although I couldn't quite tell which was which. Thankfully, I did not lose consciousness and I managed to scramble to the side of the road while the bus driver pulled over. He alighted to inquire as to my well-being and we exchanged information. In spite of my shocked and injured state, I felt profound sympathy for the bus captain. He looked highly stressed, likely worried about the consequences of the accident. As an occasional driver myself, I certainly do not wish to be in that position. Luckily for the both of us, I walked away from the accident largely unscathed. I endured severe aching for the next few days, but fortunately did not suffer from any fractures or concussions. Indeed, I'm truly grateful that I can stand here today to deliver this speech. My accident gave me much to think about, but especially in relation to road safety. What could have caused the bus captain to completely overlook my presence on a well-lit road when traffic was light, I clearly had right of way and also had ample time to cross the junction? Was it a case of a driver whose shift was too long or who had had insufficient days of rest? Or was it an issue of the discretionary right turns leading drivers to make a quick turn when there is no oncoming traffic, but forgetting that pedestrians too have the right of way? What exactly are the safeguards we have in place to prevent an accident like mine from recurring? Indeed, my friends remarked that had I been a child or a senior citizen, that the impact of the accident would have been that much more severe. I therefore reached out to the bus company to understand more about their safety procedures. The company was forthcoming. Two members of its senior management met with me and addressed all my queries. They were able to account for the bus captain's years of experience, driving schedule, daily working hours, break times and shift durations, all of which were well within the mandated industry standards. They also shared with me their company's proprietary telematics system that monitors every bus captain for every journey, tracking data such as their driving and turning speeds and instances of sudden braking. Such information helps the company determine how reckless or safety conscious their drivers are. Using such data, bus captains are effectively graded for their driving performance and the information is conveyed to them via a mobile app so that they can regulate and modulate their own driving as necessary. After my accident, the bus captain was immediately suspended when the investigation established that he was at fault and that there were no issues with the bus. Following the suspension, he underwent a day of retraining where his driving was assessed by a supervisor before he was deemed roadworthy and returned to service. Incidentally, the telematics data revealed that he was consistently one of their safest drivers, which perhaps helps to explain why I'm still here today. <laughs>